my name is Jessica. I'm with the Freshwater Fisheries Society of BC, and I'm here with Al. Al is the owner of Tunqua Lake Resort, which is where we are at today. So, Al, we are here ice fishing. Can you tell me a little too. bit about what you're using? Sure. Yeah, we're uh, we're here up in the north end of Tunqua Lake. Uh, pretty simple rig. We nickname it a Tunqua rig, but it's essentially just a steelhead spoon with a dropper, little jig, and then different types of baits on the end of it. So. We're hopping the spoon, making it dance and flash a lot and hoping to call the trout in and then come in and hopefully they grab the bait. Awesome. And what are some typical baits that you should try to use? Like what's, where's a good starting point? Yeah, you can't really go wrong. Um, a piece of a dew worm is always a good bet. Yeah. They seem to really like it. Trick is just not letting them freeze on there. A little bit of shrimp, raw shrimp, sometimes uh, cooked cocktail shrimp or some little secret cures guys will use, you know, right. trying to get really fancy on there. Um, Maggots work good, mealworms sometimes work good as well, but really you can't go wrong with the yeah, mealworm. Anything, Keep it nice right? and simple, yep. And then how deep would you say you should fish? Tunk was a shallow lake. Uh, like at the deepest and full pool, you're gonna hit maybe 20 feet of water. But this time of year, the lake's a lot shallower. We've found uh, the fishing to be better, going in shallower into some of the shallow bays, close to the weed edges. You know, we're in that five to eight feet of water. It's, it's, tends to be when the fish come in there, they're feeding. When the fish are sitting out over deeper water, they're a little bit more uh, in a neutral state right. feeding. So right. the shallow water seems to be the key and close to weed edges. Awesome, so you have a fish finder, so that'll tell you exactly how deep you're fishing, but what if you don't? You don't? Well, you can drop the line down and then just pull it up and then see how deep you are. Right. You know, kind of hold it up against yourself to compare it. Yeah. And you can see, or you can, uh, if you look down the hole, just cover the hole up and let your eyes focus and you can usually see the bottom to right. get a good idea on right. it there. And that's a good way to tell. If you look down and you see weeds, you really don't want to be fishing in the weeds. You want to no. be just off the weeds. Okay. And uh, yeah, and sometimes too, if it's, you know, if it's not too wet, you can often see the fish cruise by, and which right. is really cool, especially for kids. Yeah, You can for see sure. a fish coming in looking at things. For sure. Yeah. The fish finder just, it's like my eyes underwater. I can see my spoon, I can see my jig. And then I can see when the fish kind of come in as well. So it just makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, it makes it keeps it a bit more interesting as well. Right. I know when a fish is there so I can get excited. Yeah. So <laughs> you'd be surprised how many fish you see on the graph that actually don't bite. You know, they come right up to it. They'll kind of almost bump the line, but they're just not taking it. They're just neutral. So there's lots and lots of fish down there. Right. And they're a little bit more lethargic in the winter, oh, right? They are, yeah. yeah. The water, water is just, you know, just barely above freezing and uh, yeah they're lethargic and they really go in little flurries you know first light last light seem to be the prime times yeah no for sure so ice fishing is a really family friendly sport sure um, we brought our kids out today yep. it's pretty it's pretty awesome because you can access the whole lake without having a boat right oh but, yeah but what are yeah. some other like equipment or gear that you would suggest bringing out i think the most important thing is just to keep yourself warm definitely. especially the kids the kids <laughs> yeah. got to be warm definitely um you know, have good boots. You can get a little bit of slush sometimes if you get a lot of snow. So having some waterproof boots are good. Um, good gloves are really important. And those little uh, glove warmers Definitely. are just, just the cats, yeah. you know, for the kids. Keep their hands warm. So find if you keep yourself warm and uh, the sun's usually, it's nice and sunny usually in the daytime and it's really quite comfortable. But if you get cold, it's just no fun. Yeah. So keep warm. Um, good boots, good gloves are probably the most important thing. Like you said, you don't really need a vehicle. You know, you can you can walk out anywhere. There's uh, access to pretty well all of the lake. Um, you don't need a snow machine or anything like that. Um, yeah, so it's it's a it's very simple too. You don't need fancy equipment. You can use a stick with a piece of line and <laughs> yeah. hook. You know, keep it as simple as you want. Yeah, no, good point on keeping it warm. I've changed my son Jaden's gloves like four times oh, yeah. in the two hours we've been out here fishing. He yep. falls, they're wet. Game over. You yep. need a new set. It makes for a sure. snowball and everything. Yeah, <laughs> and then, then it's done. Yeah, no, yeah. you got to keep keep warm. Even the adults have got to keep warm. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah, once That's you it. get cold, it's hard to warm up while yep. you're out here. It's nice. Yeah. We've seen a lot of people um, like ice fishing up here is still fairly new. I think it came in the regs 2009 it was the okay. first time Tunko opened for ice fish. So we've really seen it build um, where people are starting to get their own gear, seeing all kinds of, um, you know, the ice huts, yep. like those nice Rapala ones. We're seeing lots and lots of those now where we never saw them before. I think people are just starting to get into it. Yeah. You know, the equipment isn't expensive. Yeah. It's really nice to see because a lot of times it is family. You can hear kids in the background having a good time. Um, so it's a lot of fun, something to do in the winter and get out and get some fresh air. Yeah, for sure. When would you say the season kind of starts? When should people be kind of thinking about like, okay, I'm going to plan my trip or get my gear together? Yeah, well, Tunqua usually ices up fairly quick in the year. 
Usually by the end of November, we're okay. we're into safe ice. Yeah. I, I kind of tell people at the beginning of December is always safe ice. Yeah. Um, you know, you want to have at least four inches yeah. of good, good solid ice on there. So um, December kind of picks up onto there, and depending on the year, it can go well into March. Yeah. Um, and what are we? What's the ice thickness now? It's like ten, right? It depends. Yeah. I think some spots are as low as eight inches, and some spots are twelve inches. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's not year. We usually. Uh, on Tumco, we used to get two feet of ice, 24 wow. inches of ice. This year we got a lot of snow early, which yeah. acted like a blanket, insulated yeah. it, and it's kept the ice thickness down. And that's made it a bit slushy too in, in right. parts. But right. lots of ice, you know, it's plenty safe. Awesome. Yeah. If you'd like more information about ice fishing around the entire province, check out our website, www.gofishbc.com. And if you want more information about Tunkwa, where can people look for that? Uh, too. The best thing is to go to our website, and that's TunkaLakeResort.com. And uh, we do a fishing report every week on there. Uh, you can get on the webcam as well, kind of see conditions. Or people are more than welcome to give us a call, and uh, myself or one of my guys yeah. are glad to give them any information. Awesome. Anytime. Awesome. Okay, now we just have to catch a fish. Yeah. Working on it. <laughs> Working on it.